Hi everybody and welcome to this Rookie Division general playthrough for the North Carolina Nine Hole Cup here on the BK Golf Clash YouTube channel. We're playing on the Quail Hollow course. Please give me a thumb up and a very warm welcome if you are new here. Make sure you're subscribed. It is totally free to do so. We're going to have a look at all nine holes that are going to be used, showing you some potential routes. You might need to tweak the adjustments based on the wind directions that you'll face during the tournament, but should give you an idea of how you might want to approach these holes. Let's get started by looking at hole number one. Starting with a par three, and we have a hole in one here. We're going to be playing with the backbone or whatever long iron you've got in the best level. One bar of backspin, two bars side spin to the left. So we're going to use a quasar. Adding spin, and then I'm looking at the ball guide to be pointing deliberately just right of the cup. That's because the wind is going to push us from the right to the left. So ball guide aiming one cup to the right. Then we adjust medium distance, 15% elevation, mid plus 15 on this one. Playing with the backbone, as that is, I think, the best general rookie level long iron. But if you don't have the backbone, you may have a slightly lower level club. Uh, the same adjustment should work. In which case, don't look at the ring sizes or the ring placement. Just focus on the second bounce after spin is added. So then you can... Uh, cater to your club and club level. Drops very nicely for a hole in one. The second hole is the first of the par fours on Quail Hollow. We're going to use the extra mile and a katana. Four and a half top spin, three bars side spin to the left. We want the ball to kick nicely to the left as this is a dog leg hole. So setting up at max distance with our power two ball, red ring touching the rough on the left. We're going to adjust this one maximum distance 10% elevation. So for extra mile six, that is going to be 1.8 rings for a 3.8 mile per hour wind. And we're going with some left curl, half a ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the left. Hitting perfect. And the reason we're going with the top spin and the katana, we want to try and get ourselves fairly close so we can use a short iron on approach to increase our drop rate. It's going to be much easier to get the eagle with a short iron rather than the backbone. Second shot there is max distance club. You can aim there, look, before the rough and bounce over if you don't want to play the rough bump. Uh, but the rough bump, as usually is the case, offers you the best chance. Now with the thorn level five, I don't have a lot of top spin available, so I have to set up close to the edge of the rough. If you have a short iron with more top spin, then I would go with that. And then you can have, for example, the top of the yellow ring rather than the inner green ring touching the rough. It gives you a bit more room in case you accidentally overpower your shot or you don't adjust quite as accurately as you need to. Half a bar of topspin, aim at the pin there, shorter ball guide with this level of thorn and I'm nearly at max distance. Um, in the end, I play this one just before max distance, maybe subtracting 0.1 from the max number because I wasn't quite at max distance, the short iron, but we drop it beautifully for an eagle. So max plus zero on the second shot. A very long par five, and at the time of recording, this is the longest hole we have in the whole of Golf Clash. It's over 700 yards from front tee. We need a berserker. There's no two ways about it. And in tailwind, we are going to reach in two. Other wind angles, it is going to be very difficult indeed with true rookie clubs. Four and a half top spin with the extra mile. Uh, I tested with the big topper, but it does not go anywhere near as far as the extra mile. So this is the club to use. Aiming just right of the centre of the fairway, we're going to adjust maximum distance, 10% elevation. Once we've done that, we're going to push back up to max along the line of the shot. Make sure you push up in a straight line. It's a full overpower shot, unfortunately, because we need distance. So try and hit a perfect ball, which thankfully we do with this level of club. And this is going to go down the fairway nicely. The top spin will take us along. And the tailwind helps a bit as well, but we still need a berserker, regardless of the wind strength or wind direction. Drive distance, 421 yards. Second shot can be played with the big dog. And um, first we're going to add some top spin. So we're going to add our spin here. Uh, I'm going with, uh, there is five bars of top spin and two left spin. Then I'm going to push up into overpower and see the second bounce to be just above the rough before the green. 
So just find out there. Once we found that position, look at how many rings are in the red from the bullseye. It's just about a one ring there. So that's what I need to push up to get that uh, correct position after I've adjusted. So I'm adjusting max plus zero. Then once that's done, I'm pushing up the amount I was stretching into overpower to find my desired landing position. So just under one ring to push up there. And then we're going to take our shot. The reason I push up is that I don't want to play with overpower with the big dog because if I hit great or a bad great, it may end um, in a not a very nice place. We want to try and get uh, to the pin. Thankfully here, I'm very lucky I dropped this for an albatross. Try and aim at the pin as best you can with the bull guide you have with the big dog. Very, very lucky there. I honestly wasn't playing for the albatross. If it hadn't have gone in, we'd have had a short putt for the eagle and that's all we can ask for on hole three. On to the fourth hole we go, and I'm going to use the quarter back here. The reason for that, rather than the extra mile, is we need curl, because it's another dog leg, and it's a fairly long hole as well. Playing with a Titan power three ball, going with uh, just before three top spin, that's max available with quarter back six, and two left spin. Blue ring touching the bunker, and then I'm adjusting max plus ten. I'm pushing my rings, otherwise the bunker and the tree makes it a little bit awkward to adjust. It takes me into overpower, so I'm going to add that onto my shot. Uh, in the end, I go with about two to three rings of overpower, and it's full curl to the left. So about a ball and a half of curl to the right. Sorry, not the left. It's right curl. Um, perfect ball away. Great left, great right. As long as they're minor ones, it's going to be fine because the quarterback is a nice and accurate club. We get this one to 308 yards, which means we can play with the Viper for our second shot. I'm finding the max line, finding the minimum distance line, moving my target uh, halfway between the two. So we're going to play this mid distance of club. Two left spin and the back spin will vary depending on the wind strength. I'm going with four back spin here because the headwind angle is going to compress the ball guide that we see. So that will check the ball up nicely. If you've got tailwind, obviously you would need a little bit more back spin. So if you have the Viper in a lower level, and maybe don't have as much backspin available, then I will play this one with the Guardian instead, because you've got plenty more backspin with even in the lower level club. So mid distance, zero elevation, hitting perfect. The goal here is just to get it close to secure the birdie. Maybe tweaking the aim if I'd got a token or two and we were in tournament, I could just move the aim over to the left a little bit. But either way, a nice easy put for the birdie on hole number four. Now on this par three, the best opportunity for holding one is by playing a rough bump shot. If you are not comfortable with that, then just play a standard bounce down, bouncing on the fairway as we would normally. But the rough bump, excellent chance. Five top spin, half a bar of side spin to the left. Using the Goliath because we need distance top spin uh, combined. Setting up in the middle of the rough with a ball guide pointing to the hole just a little bit short. And that's only because Goliath level six doesn't have a fully developed ball guide. So if you're using true rookie clubs, you're going to have to leave the ball guide short. Maybe even shorter than that if you've got a much lower level. Medium distance, no elevation. We want to hit perfect though with the lower accuracy of the Goliath. Want to try and make sure we hit perfect. If you're not feeling comfortable, then just bounce down play for a safer birdie, more of an outside chance of a hole in one. The rough bump is a great opportunity though because it takes away the second bounce and really you've just got to line up, adjust nicely and you've got a good chance there at a minus two. On to the sixth hole which is a par five. Now I'm once again going to go with the quarterback here because we need the curl and the extra mile in true rookie club level doesn't have a lot of curl. So tighten it is, two left spin, just under three top spin, white ring touching the rough on the left at max distance with our tight. And then we're going to adjust max plus 10. Once I've done that, I'm going to spin the target round, looking back at the line of the shot and I'm pulling up to max distance just to gain myself a few more yards. Going with some overpower here, but we're using the quarterback, so a great ball should be fine. A couple of rings of overpower and almost one ball of curl to the left just to get round this dog leg design on this par five. Perfect ball bounces very nicely. We're not threatening the rough. And then, like I said, a great left, great right with the quarterback. You're going to be absolutely fine. 327 yards. 
Second shot, I was having a look here to see if I could bounce directly there with backspin and right spin. It is an option, maybe if I was a bit nearer I could do that, but we can bounce over the bunker nicely as well. So, one and a half top spin, one bar side spin to the right, in the end I go with two. The reason is I want to just cut the bunker away from the equation, and the more right spin I have, the less of the rough and the sand I need to bounce over. Aim at the pin as best you can, because I'm at mid distance of club, I play mid distance, zero elevation. This shot is fairly flat, as with most of the approach shots on Quail Hollow. We haven't got massive downhill elevations to deal with, which is nice. So mid plus zero on this one. Aim at the pin as best you can. We hit perfect. Obviously, if you have the sniper in a low level with some top spin, that would be a good shout as well, because you get more ball guide. In the end, just a little bit to the right, the pace a tad short but we're safely on the green for an eagle on this par five. Hole number seven coming up here. Again, a little bit of a dog leg, but not as severe. We can use the extra mile and a Titan here very nicely indeed. Four and a half top spin, two side spin to the left um, to follow the contour of the fairway. Half of the red ring inside the rough with the extra mile six at max distance with power three. I adjust maximum distance, 10% elevation. Once again, I'm going to push or pull back up to max distance of club to gain as much yardage possible. Outer wall curl to the left. So that's the left edge of the ball touching the left edge of the adjustment ring on the left, of course. And then we're going to hit perfect. And the top spin takes us nicely down the fairway here. Drive distance is going to be 354 yards. Obviously, Headwind angle, you might need to go with some overpower, um, but you've just got to see what wind angles you get during the tournament. Now, I've got enough distance here. The reason I want to go over 350 is because we can then play with the long iron rather than the wood club. Near max distance here, setting up a couple of yards away from max because there is a hint of a headwind angle here. It's more level crosswind, but there is, like I said, just a little hint uh, of headwind. I want to have room to adjust. So spins as shown, Again, coping with a slightly uh, lower ball guide here. Your ball guide may be different to mine. Depends what level your club is. Tricky hole to drop this one, especially in this wind angle. And it's a lengthy par four for rookies. But we get a perfect ball away. Let's see how this one comes in. Speed's good. Need to just revise the aim on that one. But we're not going to have any problem with that putt. So a nice tactical safe drive. Get to the green nicely in two for your birdie, with the outside chance of an eagle. With hole number eight, we need a long iron with plenty of backspin because there is not that much um, opportunity really to stop the ball because we can't bounce too far in front of the green. Playing with four backspin in this wind angle, direct headwind I'd reduce to about three and a half, and then obviously level crosswind and tailwind, you might need somewhere between four and five bars of backspin. You need more to stop the wind pushing it too long. So pack a long iron with enough backspin. Aiming there as shown, we're going to adjust this one medium distance, 20% elevation, medium distance plus 20. Don't worry about the second bounce or the ball guide uh, looking a bit odd because in this headwind scenario, it will actually give us a shorter ball guide than the one shown on the screen. So mid plus 20 here, let's see how we get on. Bounce nicely before the fringe, just need to tweak the aim a little bit there. Very good speed though on that one, but a decent chance if you get your amount of backspin correct. Let's finish off with an albatross then on hole number nine. We are gonna go with the extra mile and we're gonna play with a Titan for the distance. And we want to get to a specific point in the fairway. I don't want to go right down the fairway as far as you can see, because the trees are gonna be in the way. We're gonna lay up here, even though it's still a fairly lengthy drive, play a tactical drive, and we want to approach the pin with a rough bump, cutting the corner on this long hole. So spins are shown, max plus 10 is the adjustment, and I'm going with half a ball of curl to the right. Let's see how this one comes in. So we're bouncing comfortably past the rough there on the right, plenty of room either side, and a drive distance here of 355 yards. Second shot, if you've got the sniper, I would use it, but I'm gonna show you the shot with a Viper here to show you that it still can be done. 
finding max distance of club and uh, then just backing up my target to have the yellow ring completely in the rough. Then I'm going to add spin. The problem with the Viper doesn't have a full ball guide, so that's why I find my position before adding spin to check my alignment. Then I'm adding my backspin. It's going to be three backspin in tailwind. You will need slightly um, less backspin with crosswind and even less with headwind. Um, but we're aiming at the pin. Very difficult to see because the white ring gets in the way. In the end, I play this one max distance plus zero. Uh, you can reduce a little bit on the slider to go a little bit less, but it was coming out with the same number of rings, if I remember correctly. Nice flat shot, so max plus zero. Bounces in the rough very nicely, and that is the best opportunity you're going to get for an albatross on this hole. Going further down the fairway, like I said, you're going to have an obscure view of the pin, and you'll be playing for an eagle at best. So if you want to go aggressive, get that minus three on the end of your round. That's the way to do it. Thank you very much for watching this video on the North Carolina Nine Hole Cup here on the channel. If you want more help and want to interact with loads of other Golf Clash players and myself over on our free Facebook group, please search for BK Golf Clash and hit the join button. Over 12,000 members there. Shot sharing, free guides, discussion points and more. So I look forward to seeing you over there. Good luck in the Nine Hole Cup and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Take care. Bye for now.